So this is kind of a follow-up video to the how to reference a .NET Core class library in the .NET framework. Uh, primarily because uh, one of the users on my channel called Eric uh, posted this question and basically uh, stating it isn't it easier to use a .NET standard class library uh, to achieve what we were doing in this video which is to reference a .NET Core class library. And I'm trying to answer that and in, in a comment on the video it's simply much too large of a, a response so I thought I'd do a quick follow-up video. Uh, so I'll quickly show you where they are. So we have .NET Core here and you've got a class library .NET Core and that was all that existed at the start of when DNX came out which is what turned into .NET Core. And obviously during the evolution of any framework and any technology in general as it was growing it got renamed from vnext to .NET uh, from DNX vnex to dnx to .NET Core, then they started using words like uh, the .NET Standard and everything got intermingled. Um, so it caused a very confusing set of terms that most people still don't understand today. Um, but in short, .NET Standard, and as you see it here, which confuses it even more, .NET Standard is not an implementation, it is a standard. So it means it's, it's almost like an interface. If you think of like .NET Core as a class and .NET Standard as an interface, and the .NET Core implements the .NET Standard interface, and the WPF app implements a .NET Standard interface, and those version numbers are, say, versions of the interface. So that's the way you can think of it, that the .NET Standard is, is an interface that defines how things are as a standard, and then all of these implementations, all of these frameworks implement a certain standard. So at the start, we had a .NET Core class library, and instantly everybody wanted to reference them in like WPF and other places so that they could have shared code. And that's where this, and that was the purpose of this first video, to show people who already have a .NET Core class library and already got working code, but they want to reference it inside of WPF or Windows Forms or an old ASP.NET for, you know, any reason. So that was kind of the point of that video. Um, as .NET expanded and grew, uh, the issue with .NET Core progressing was they were trying to maintain this class library backwards compatibility with older frameworks when really .NET Core is a brand new framework. It's a new implementation that wants to progress faster than, say, WPF will progress. So as new standards come out, like the .NET Standard 2.0, uh, .NET Core is at the, the cutting edge. It wants to be released first. And because this was acting as kind of a dual purpose, it was acting as a... Um, a class library as well as uh, a shared library with other frameworks. So what they did was they actually split uh, the .NET Core and the, specifically the part of the .NET Core, like this class library if you will, the fundamental code sharing aspect of it into its own type uh, and confusingly they called it .NET Standard Class Library. Uh, which really throws confusion into the mix because .NET Standard is not an implementation. So this really means a class library that implements .NET Standard and you can simply select which version you like. So if we just create a .NET Standard, so we'll call it Class Library Standard. And then we'll also create a .NET Core class library so you can see the difference. So new project, .NET Core class library, and call this one Core. And you can see in the standard, if we go properties, the target framework is now the true .NET standards. And these are the, the implementations and 2.0 will be coming soon. So you can now target a specific framework, a, well not a framework, so it's the standard you know, of what your frameworks are meant to implement. Whereas .NET Core class library, which was the first ones, target something called .NET Core App. So they're two fundamentally different things, and the first video was to show you how to specifically link core class libraries, should you already have them, with like WPF and other applications. Um, so the question becomes then, why would you not want to reference a dot, or rather create a .NET standard class library over a .NET Core? And really, that there are very little reasons. The initial reason is when this first came out, the .NET Standard Class Library, about, I think, September last year, somewhere around that time. Uh, there was 
not much implemented in the .NET standard. So the .NET core was ahead of the game. It was under pressure of you know users asking for features and wanting things that were missing, like at the very beginning XML was missing. So you couldn't even do an X document and load things in. Um, or serialization or binary converters. There were so many things missing that the core class library had far more features. So you could almost use it with you know a lot more feature set. And the .NET standard library was far behind. So that was the original reason why. But now, and especially with the upcoming release of .NET standard 2.0, there's very little reason to need to use uh, a core class library unless you are targeting specifically just a core application. So say you're making, and by a core application, I mean if you go to add new project and you go to .NET Core and you're only making really an ASP.NET Core web app and that will run on Mac, Linux and Windows um, and that's the, that's the .NET Core framework, that's this new framework. So if you were only targeting and your your application was only ever going to be this ASP.NET framework, um, then you could target a, a .NET Core class library to share it between, say, multiple ASP.NET Core applications. So it's sort of, if this is your whole world, this is all you're going to design, then go ahead and create class libraries here. However, if you want to make WPF apps or Windows Universal apps or Xamarin apps or any other, then typically you'd want to create a .NET standard class library and, th and that's the the way you do it now um, and again you'll find certain things missing right now in .NET standard that are in .NET core uh, but you can install the preview tools in order to get the .NET standard 2.0 which will have almost everything implemented so cutting a long story short usually if you're starting a new project simply create a class library that's .NET standard and then reference that instead so if we now go ahead and do similar to the first video. Let's create a new project. Let's make a WPF application. And that will do. Let's just make sure everything builds first. So there's no issues. Everything's built. And now on the WPF app, you right click, uh, right click on the references, add reference, and you can reference the standard library as normal, and it will reference. And if you build, you'll probably get an error so now it's saying the .NET standard 1.4 can't be referenced by 4.5.2. And again, same fix as the last one. You can simply up your target framework or you can lower the standard library implementation here. And if you might be asking, well, where's that list? Or, you know, where do I find that information? So if we go to here, the same place before docs.microsoft.com, engb or enus, .NET standard, net dash standard. You'll get this .NET platform standard table. And this table here shows uh, what's implemented. So we're on 4.5.2, so we're like right in the middle here. Um, and we basically know that now anything that targets the .NET framework, 4.5.1, has to have 1.2. So you'll find it supports 1.3 as well, but if we drop this to 1.2 and now build, we've lost some of the APIs that were obviously in 1.4, but now we've successfully referenced this library and we can build against it. You can go to 1.3 and that succeeds. It's kind of a in-between state that wasn't mentioned. You go to 1.4 and it won't build because 4.5.2 doesn't implement, as you can see here. So if we up our um, target to 4.6.2 we should be able to reference the latest on my system which is 1.6 so we change .NET standard to 1.6 change the WPF application to 4.6.2 and now these two should be on effectively a, a very up-to-date thing and you can see here it's now saying it's, it's not implemented so let's just drop it to 4.6.1 because that's technically the explicit version it says is capable. So it's still complaining even though this table is telling us that the .NET standard framework implementing 4.6.1 supports this and it doesn't. So I think this table slightly out of sync but let's go ahead and say jump to framework 4.7 and see if that allows us to target 1.6. So there we go. So there's, there's a slight issue with this table in what it says it is and what it really is. So 4.6... oh 
it says table just updated. Um, ah, I see. So I need tooling 2.0 preview in order for this to work. So I've been, no, I've been, my eyes have been following this table here, not this one. So we've obviously got tooling 1.0. So we need 4.6.2 that we were on, only supports 1.5. Whereas we've jumped to 4.7, which has allowed us to target 1.6. So if we installed the tooling 2.0 preview, we could use 4.6.1 as well. Uh, but the point of all this is you can, this is the typical way it'd work. You'd work. You create a .NET standard library and you change the framework ideally to the highest possible between your shared applications. And that's how you'd work. So say you were making a WPF application. So it's the .NET framework and you're making a Xamarin iOS app and let's say a uh, universal Windows platform. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to pick each one. So the iOS, the, the Windows platform, and the .NET framework. And you'd have to find the newest framework that all three support. So along here, this is saying vNext, which basically, as, I, as far as I gather, that's the, the latest thing that hasn't got a version number yet. So ignore that part. So we need to have, say, the Windows yeah, UWP targeting 10 and then we can hit 1.4 and we can't really go above it to 1.5 because it's not out yet officially. So this is the lowest point here, 1.4. iOS supports up to 1.6 and .NET Framework supports up to 1.5 or 1. Point, you know, the whole works if you get the tooling. So basically the lowest point in this chain is we'd have to drop our shared um, .NET standard class library to version 1.4 in order to support UWP. And now it can be used with all these um, frameworks here. So it can be used with every one of these. If you wanted to target everything, including even Windows Phone Silverlight, which is Windows Phone 7, I believe, then you'd have to lower it right down to the standard 1.0, which means you'd be missing a lot of things. So there's a compromise between what's going to be available in order to hit, you know, the cross-platform area compared to um, a trade-off of having, say, a modern um, .NET standard class library that can have more features, but potentially you can't target certain things. So you can use this as the reference, as, you know, how I've just explained in that table to pick your .NET standard class library version number, and the idea is to get as high as possible. And then I thought, in order to explain for people that have been using .NET Core and are wondering what this .NET standard is, because the part of the problem is, as things progress fast, and even the best of us constantly working in software and trying to keep up with constant change like the .NET framework is, and all the terminologies and the names and things that we've got used to, uh, it can be difficult. So a newcomer coming in might start and just read a document and they simply create a .NET standard library and get going. Um, probably if you're using Xamarin and the latest tutorials, um, they'll be pushing .NET standard class libraries. But if you've used it already, if you've already been using DNX or .NET Core or anything that you've known it as in the past, you'll likely still be using these .NET Core uh, class libraries and be wondering what the hell this .NET standard class library is because .NET standard is, is not an implementation, as we mentioned. So in order to explain that, instead of me babbling on through a video for an hour, I thought I'd try and find a good explanation and I found one here on Microsoft's website. And I think this link is by far the best link that explains mainly for people that have already used .NET Core and are wondering what the difference is. So here's the original, how we've been using it, if you will. And this is a .NET Core class library here called Core Library. And you can see they've got, they're on effectively different layers. These are ba different base libraries. And the first video, we managed to make a link between these two uh, libraries thanks to uh, you know the late, latest frameworks allowing that kind of link. But as we go down, a .NET standard library now has separated what this core library was trying to do and make this interface between all three, and it's become its own thing. So now a .NET standard library is a true uh, layer between these, and you can see they're trying to now drop, if you will, the, the core as even a module um, in this layer. Uh, so the .NET standard library is, is the true uh, cross-platform library. Uh, and again, if you scroll down, uh, you'll have this table again, which they've tried to make easier with an arrow. Um, and you keep going. 
And you'll find the key part, I think, that helps people understand the difference is it starts here, the .NET standard two breaking changes. Um, and you keep going and explains what it is and what was missing. Um, and then we'll find it in a minute. And then this statement, I think, really solidifies um, the thing that you'll be after, the, the what's the difference question that will come up. Uh, and I, I won't read it out to you, but in short, it tells you that um, in the beginning, the issue was that the .NET Core uh, was trying to bridge this gap uh, and act as like a standard, and it was slowing the, the progression down. So again, this, I really recommend reading this page if you want to understand the difference uh, and a lot of the changes that have gone on. Uh, so I'll put this link in the bottom of the video and you can happily read. But hopefully that's clarified uh, this question to Eric, and I'll get back to him just after this video. Um, but yes, he, he is correct in saying that really you should reference .NET standard libraries, uh, and then you can target all these frameworks. Um, but the only downside is, again, you might be missing the, a few things in the .NET standard library that are available in the core library. However, if you want to, if you can sort of put up with that, or even just install the .NET uh, standard 2.0 preview tools so that you can get onto 2.0. I'm sure you'll find uh, you'll have everything you need there. So hopefully that's clarified it. Again, any more questions, just let me know uh, and I'll get back to you.